Good morning, everybody. In this series, I'm aiming to open up difficult to understand passages that could prove a stumbling block to faith and try and turn them into building blocks that will help us to understand God's word better. Today, our passage can be found in the book of John, chapter 9, verses 39 to 41, where Jesus said, For judgment I have come into this world, so that the blind will see and that those who see will become blind. Then some of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, Are we blind also? And Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say, We see, therefore your sin remains. Now I'm going to tackle this passage over several short videos, starting with the phrase, For judgment I have come into this world. So to quickly set the scene for this statement, Jesus has healed a man who has been blind since birth. The Pharisees are investigating the healing and it has proven to be very controversial. The Pharisees wanted to disprove or discredit this healing in order to try and show that Jesus was not the Son of God. And in this passage, Jesus is talking to the Pharisees and the man who was healed of blindness. So in verse 39, it says, For judgment I have come into this world. Now, if you have read the rest of the book of John, alarm bells should be ringing at this stage, because this seems to be in contradiction with John 3, 17, where it says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. But also in John chapter 12, verse 47, where it says, for I did not come to judge the world, but to save the world. So how do we explain this apparent contradiction? Condemnation or judgment was not the main objective for Jesus. He came to rescue the lost. He came to save sinners like you and like me. But as he saves some people who come to him through faith, inevitably a division will be revealed and some people will be confirmed in their unbelief. And therefore Christ did not come to condemn, but inevitably condemnation will follow because of this division. Imagine a doctor about to amputate a man's arm because of infection. The man may say to the doctor, did you come to cut off my arm? And the doctor would reply, I didn't want to cut off your arm. I wanted to save your life. I didn't become a doctor to cut off people's arms. I became a doctor to save people's lives. But if I have to cut off your arm in the process, I'll do it. Or to try and explain this another way, imagine a prisoner of war trapped behind enemy lines and a rescue mission is about to take place and the commander is briefing his troops saying, your job is to get this man out, but you do whatever it takes to get him out. And so it is with Jesus in that his ministry, which aims to save, inevitably reveals and confirms the blindness and unbelief of some that ultimately condemns. So in conclusion, we see that judgment or condemnation was not the main reason for his ministry. He came to save the lost. He came to restore man to God. He came to die on the cross so that we can stand forgiven before a holy God. And this gift of grace is available to everyone, but it requires a response. We need to repent of our sins and trust in Jesus as our Lord and Saviour. But we do see in our passage that there is a judgment coming. Salvation rather than judgment was Jesus' mission, but judgment and condemnation will follow for those who are not washed in the blood of Jesus, for those who have not had their sins forgiven, for those who do not value Jesus as their greatest treasure. So how we respond to the gospel will have eternal consequences. And therefore there is nothing more important than accepting Jesus as Lord and Saviour. And as we close, I want to take a look at a quote from one of my favourite films called Gladiator, where Maximus Decimus Meridius states, what we do in life echoes in eternity. I want to rephrase this. What Christ did in his life and how we respond 
echoes in eternity. Take care and God bless.